So you've probably been around so many personalities over the decades in both the music industry and in your civic work outside of the industry. Does anyone stick out in your mind who made like a huge impression on you or perhaps influenced on how you go about writing, performing, or maybe even in your philanthropic work? Um, Pete Seeger. I met him uh, first uh, at a funeral uh, of a a family member. I didn't know, even know that, but uh, Toshi Seeger, his wife had gone to school with, it was my my mother's first cousin who died. And his wife had been a schoolmate of Toshi's, so they're very close. And so we, we, I'm 18 or 19 now, and, and we're playing. We've learned from, from the Weavers, which is Pete Seeger's group, and we're playing guitar and stuff. So we go to, to Uncle, you know, to uh, Arthur, Arthur's funeral, and they and we bring our instruments because they wanted us to sing it. It's going to be a, like a, 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 a sh- like a shaker or a, or a, a, a funeral where there's, there's no minister. We're just going to everybody sit around and talk a little bit. And who walks in but Pete Seeger with a 12-string guitar? And it's like, whoa. And, and we talked a bit. And, and, uh, uh, and I mentioned, mentioned to, to Toshi, uh, you know, I've never sung at a funeral before of someone I, I have, but not of someone I really knew. I'm not sure if I can do it. She, of course you can. Just sing, close your eyes, let them cry. Easier said than done. So we're sitting there and people get up and talk and talk and talk. And then all of a sudden I'm sitting Pete's about, you know, six feet from over here. And then Pete picks up the 12 string and goes, that big dark drop to do everything. Turn, turn, turn. There is a season. Turn, turn, turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Through those wonderful words from the Bible. And I go, ah. Oh. And it was the first lesson from Pete about the perfect song at the perfect moment, the perfect person. And that happened many, many more times. I, I, you know, I, because I did I, over the years, I did so many benefits up and down the Hudson. I live in, in the Hudson uh, Valley and Pete's always, you know, the clear water and hunger stuff and this and that. So he's the one more than anyone. And, uh, uh I remember another time Harry told, used to tell a story all the time. And I was there, we did a concert with, for a benefit out in Long Island with Harry, Chapin, Pete Seeger, and myself. And before the show, there's this kid, reporter, comes back and wants to talk to talk to us. And, oh, sure. So he says to Pete, he says, you know, you've spent your whole life doing benefits for causes you believe in. Uh, has it made a difference? And Pete takes it, sits there and goes, you know, I don't know. But I do know I've met the good people. People with live hearts, live eyes, live minds. And Harry used to tell that story too all the time because it, it, it was a perfect answer. Well, let, let's talk about that for a second. So, I mean, you and, and even Harry had been involved in philanthropy for as long as I can remember. Where did all the philanthropic work start with the family? Was that when Harry started doing stuff for, for hunger or did it start before, did it start before that? Well, we have to say we come from a left-wing family. We're coming from a family that believes, as artists do, that you can change the world. That 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 one of the highest offices is <clears throat> is that a citizen, you know, that that your voice matters. And Harry believed that totally, and I do too. So then, when Harry became a, a star and and had these huge crowds, he began thinking, you know, this is. This is okay, but it's, what's, what am I really achieving here, other than you know making a lot of money and being and getting people to stroking me? And and he thought about this being a, a bully pulpit as opposed to being the end all to be a star. And that's really where that came from. The and and it's, and Sandy, his wife, was very much that way. You know, it's great. So you're you're a hit star. So, uh, but it's but it's a family kind of idea that you you can make a difference. And uh, and then it's also the People that we we idolized, uh, Pete Seeger, you know, had uh, sometimes things that I I didn't agree with necessarily, but things that he did, he he, he did fully and try. I mean, he, he saved the Hudson River in some not him alone, but his ideas with and, and was a symbol of, and, and just the way Harry now is is a symbol of of, of an artist who really worked on the hunger issue. Uh, having said all that, tell us about why hunger. 
Uh, I mean, what are the problems people face? I know it's not as simple as just grow more food or keep populations down, is it? Well, it's who's. Uh, I'll tell you the simple, the simplest way to talk about hunger is if you're poor, you have real problem feeding your kids and yourself. It, so it's, poverty is the bottom line here. Now, uh, there are those of us who believe that food is a right, not a privilege. And the question of why that happens is who is making decisions about food uh, and what kind of food are, you know, are in your neighborhood. There are food deserts. So why hunger has told that story for ever since 1975, when Harry and, and Bill Ayers got, got excited about it, about the idea that this is something that really needs to be told, talk, talked about, and maybe I can do this. Uh, and in the simplest way of describing it, why hunger puts hungry people in touch with food and helps them towards self-reliance. But there's much more we do. We partner with all the other hunger groups and, and really work on changing American food policy and world food, food policy. Uh, go to why hunger, W-H-Y hunger dot org. They have a wonderful uh, website and all, and, uh, and you can get on their, their mailing list. And uh, once a week, they send out a really informative stuff. And I've been, I was one of the original board members and, I, and have been ever since. And it's one of the proudest things that I do. This wonderful organization. Harry's been gone. What is it going to be? Uh, 81. It'll be 40 years this year. 40 years. And this organization he started has been carried on by... Uh, by people who who under listen to his his what he said, but it's not Harry carrying it now. You know, it's it's us carrying it, and uh, and uh, it, it's a wonderful organization. You've got a, a really enjoyable uh, kind of I guess I I'll just call it kind of a fireside chat type of show with your family where you guys sing some great songs. I discovered it after the pandemic. Did it start with the lockdown, or were you guys doing that yes. thing all along? No. Uh, my daughter Abigail was in Brooklyn in a, an apartment with her husband and a five-year-old, <clears throat> and, when the, and she foresaw that you know uh, watching what was happening. And when the lockdown was about to happen, she said, "We're not going to stay here very long. We're going to come to, uh, and with dad and mom and, yeah, and get in, in the, this big house." Yep. Uh, so the first she we get up there, it's 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 my birthday actually, Mar March thirteenth a year ago, and they all arrive. I was supposed to do, was supposed to do a concert at the Town Crier that night up in uh, in Beacon, New York, and I canceled it the last month. I was about to do it anyway because I, you know, it's a, I, but I said I'd do it, and my daughters and my wife said, "No, this is serious stuff." And it's luckily because my piano player got COVID. He was he was actually that, so I would have gotten it. So and we all would have anyway. Didn't happen, and John is fine, John Cobert. But Abigail gets up here and she says, "You know." What? I have all these friends who have, I, I'm the playground I'm, and my friends have young kids and they're really worried about this. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, 24 hours of your kids, there's no school. Uh, and, what, you know, and you know what, dad? You're the right tool for this job. I said, what do you mean? She said, we have all your kids stuff. Why don't we just start doing a half hour show a day? We talked to, talked to through, we ended up a half hour show a day uh, of, of family music. And then we can move, morph in any way we want. So we did start out doing five days a week. The first one was was uh, St. Patty's Day a year ago, and we started doing five days a week. Now, uh, then we now after a long time, we built, went down to two days a week. And on Tuesdays, I do uh, I do it by myself, and on Thursdays, I do it with the daughters, often with the granddaughters. This week, I got up and sang themselves. Well, it was the first time. Oh my gosh, they have they grown. Oh, they wow. sang with us, and then they sang some stuff. And um, and Michael and, and John, my, my, we we uh, we uh, Facebook on with Michael and John. They get they come on and sing a song, uh, not a song, but a verse to circle every every week. They write their own verses. So it, we've done 174 shows, and it's been a lovely thing. What's happened is it's become a there's a mornings with Papa Tom uh, group that that chats with each other. Well, and, it goes and down and the side of, while you're singing. Yeah, Zoom stuff. Yes, exactly. They, and they and they and they they know each other now. They talk. How you doing? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well.